I came up with 10 different designs for every single Taylor Swift era. Debut, Fearless, Speak Now, Red, 1989, Reputation, Lover, Folklore, Evermore, and Midnight. Each of them unique and each of them a unique flavor that I find that it represents the album. We're about to open it and react to it in real time. Okay, so I've got the very first cake here. I don't want to look at the camera because otherwise I will see it. This is a cake that I designed that represents Taylor Swift's very first album. Three, two, one. Oh my god, that looks like it belongs in a museum! This is incredible! There's a cowboy hat on top, which is kind of everything. The cowboy boots and the guitar and the color is literally perfect. I would say for me, I'm a big, big Swifty, you will see that in this video. This is the color of debut, which is not blue and not green. It's a strange color where you can't really tell what it is. The butterflies, the guitar, the cowboy boots, they've done an amazing job. I really want to see if they've done all the details and everything. And they really have, you know, it's quite empty in the back. That is the only thing I will say, but I mean, Who's gonna look at this? Not us, not today. But like the butterflies, the cowboy boots, and the guitar, I would say this is a very good representation of what debut is like. Very much a humble beginning, not in a shady way, but it really is. On camera, you can't really see the cowboy hat. I wish it was bigger. It's quite poopy. Do you see the cowboy hat right there? So the flavor that I chose for this cake was vanilla. Even though it's not my favorite album, I think it's such a base for all the amazing albums that come after. And I feel like vanilla is like a good base when it comes to flavors. This makes sense in my head. I put a lot of thought into this whole video. I'm gonna slice right into the cowboy hat. Oh, that might have been a bad idea because I don't think this is edible. Oh. There are structures in the center, so it's not fully cake. So this is a slice of the debut. Okay, it has come out. Oh, that looks pretty damn incredible. It's almost like a custard in the center. I think this is a perfect representation of what this album sounds like to me. The build on this cake is also pretty incredible. How do they make the custard layer so soft, but the whole thing is still holding? And I really wanted a slice of the hat, but it just didn't work out. We're gonna give it a try, but something tells me this is gonna be incredible. Oh, that custard. For some reason, custard makes perfect sense. I love vanilla. I don't wanna sound shady because I do like this album. My favorite song on this album is probably Oh My My Mary Song, or Our Song. Our Song is a banger. One of the catchiest songs Taylor's ever written. So I do love this album. It's just that I wasn't a Swifty back then, so it doesn't hold a special place in my heart like all the other albums, but I'm gonna try it nevertheless. So custard and vanilla. It's not custard, it's Dulce de Leche, and it's incredible. But it's so good. It is so milky. It is creamy. I also want to taste the frosting on the outside. I'm not a big fan of frosting, but this one, you see how smooth that looks? Look at this. Look at the back of the cake. It just tastes like chocolate. This is a great cake, a great beginning. We're on the Eras tour right now, so we're gonna move on to the next one, which is Fearless. And things definitely start to spice up from now on, mostly because this one is vanilla. This cake is so big that I literally cannot hold it. I don't know how I'm gonna do this without looking. I'm gonna just close my eyes. I promise you I'm not gonna look. I have no idea what I'm doing here. This is the Fearless cake. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. It is so beautiful, sparkly. It's like made of gold. It's got a horse on top. It's aggressively fearless. A perfect representation of the album. Okay, let me move this. This bakery did an incredible job in recreating what I've done. This literally looks like the castle that I designed, the horse, and then all the items that to me, this is what represents the fearless era. The gold keys, of course, the most iconic visual element of the fearless era is the Junior Jewels t-shirt. I kind of hope they did all the signatures, little envelopes, and then the most important thing for me is actually the color of it, because I don't know if you guys will be able to see, 
but it's like sparkly. In my opinion, they did an incredible job. I mean, every single detail that I designed is on here. When I look at it, I see Fearless. So the flavor I chose for this one was orange. I wanted a citrus, like strong flavor because that's it's a Fearless flavor. I'm excited to cut into it and to see what a slice of Fearless looks like. The details are incredible. They almost look like it's made of plastic. That's how good it looks. I don't want to ruin it, but also I kind of want to ruin it. Who am I kidding? I am a menace. I'm not one of those lying Swifties. I wasn't a Swiftie during the Fearless era. However, I was a Swiftie during the Fearless Taylor's version era. My favorite song on this album is From the Vault, That's When, which I think is probably one of the catchiest Taylor Swift songs. And it was my most played Taylor Swift song last year. I want a slice of the Junior Jewels t-shirt. Let's go. Please tell me you'll slice all the way. Oh, this one cuts even cleaner than debut. This is gonna be the perfect slice. Watch this. That is the perfect cake slice. I am speechless. I really am. So this is an orange flavored cake. In the bottom, you've got like an orange curd and then some whipped cream, vanilla frosting maybe. It smells very strong of citrus orange. There really isn't a much better slice of cake than this. We're gonna give it a try because I want to see, does this taste the way Fearless sounds to me? Let's give it a try. I want some of that curd, whipped cream, orange. I'm not the biggest fan of orange flavored things. Let's see if this converts me. Wow. It's like taking a bite into an orange. That is so orangey. I think the whipped cream is a must here because it kind of adds a creaminess to so much citrusy flavor. It is such a moist cake. All of them are. I think the sponge is really similar in terms of texture as the one before, but this one is just orange flavored. I can see the orange zest in the sponge, so it's not pre-made. This is like, they gave me the full Swifty experience. They paid attention to the details. They put that Easter egg <laughs> in the cake ingredients. This is very, very good. I'm very excited to get to my favorite eras, which come a little bit later on. I'm more of a pop, indie, Swifty. Those kind of albums are my favorite, but I'm really happy that this has done justice to my favorite country album, which is Fearless. So let's carry on with the Eras Tour cake version. This is Speak Now. This is what I consider to be the last truly country album, Red being 50-50. This is the last album before I decided to dedicate my whole life to Taylor Swift. So we've got big expectations. So this is the Speak Now era in a cake. Holy, that is the most beautiful, hands down, so far. And they finally did the cake all around, which is kind of what was disappointing about the previous ones. This looks better than my drawing. It also is a perfect representation of the Speak Now era. So on this Speak Now part of the era tour, I think when Taylor sings Long Live, this is a very similar dress. So that was my inspiration for the whole cake. And I love that this is also the centerpiece of the design of the cake. Very important, the 13. And I specifically said this needs to be glitter stars which I think is very speak now the purple guitar this chain here with these little birds and the stars and hearts and all those little details I was inspired by the design of a Taylor Swift perfume bottle that was released during speak now I am that much of a committed Swifty I know the details I've done my homework of course the cage on top which I think is to me like the most visual speak now detail this cage is not the best when it comes to the construction of it. I don't know if you guys can see, it's collapsing slightly. Let's say if you had a bird in there, Bye bye bird. When we make cake videos, I spend so much of my time kind of comparing my design versus what they actually made. This bakery has done such an incredible job that it looks exactly like my drawing. They've done a perfect job and I really like that they've done the bag. It's such a small thing, but it makes a huge difference that the cake is like 3D, that you're fully there in the Speak Now era, sending hate comments to John Mayer. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not that kind of swift. Growing up with an Instagram account was dangerous. Let's put it that way. This one was really easy. Speak Now era tastes like blueberry. When you close your eyes and you think of the songs, Back to December, Mean, when you think of these songs, to me, it tastes like blueberry. I want to cut a slice right in the front. Wow. Okay, that went maybe a little bit too far. That is going to be a huge slice. Even though these cakes were made by the same baker, they're not very consistent when it comes to the size of the slices, which remix, I guess. Always keep them guessing. Me when I don't make videos. 
for three months non-stop and then post 20 videos in the same week. It really is a beautiful cake. Let's see if I can get a good slice. These cakes are so moist that it just, it's like slicing into butter. Oh man, there's actual blueberries inside. Are you kidding me? If Speak Now was a flavor, it would be exactly this. That is incredible. It smells like a blueberry pie. It is a perfect visual representation of the album. It is also a beautiful slice of cake. It is so heavy. They put so much stuff in here that it literally does not move. Like this one will not slide. I spent so much money in this video. I'm like, I want the best slice in every single cake. And my friends who are going to eat these cakes after, you can eat the back, it tastes the same. Get over it. Free cake is free cake, you're welcome. I want to get a piece of the actual blueberries. Are you kidding me? This is gonna be so good. I want this to taste like the Speak Now era. Yup. Oh, it weirdly does. It has the best flavor by far. It's really strong. Actually, the orange one was really strong as well. This one's even stronger. This is the strongest blueberry flavor anything I've ever eaten. It is insane. It's like slaps you in the face to blueberry. I'm like, whoa, calm down. Say no to violence. And the frostings in these cakes are so, so good. They look so smooth that you'd think it's like a sugar paste, but it's actual buttercream. And then they lock it with some chocolate, like the moisture of the cake. And it goes with perfectly with it. Like chocolate blueberry is strangely delicious. I don't mean this in a bad way, but it tastes like homemade cake. Like it tastes like made by someone you know. This is a really strange compliment to give. It's a real slice of cake with real pieces of blueberry. This is incredible. I really want to finish the whole slice, but I know I can't because we've got 10 slices to eat. Then I can have more later if I still want it. Speak Now is my favorite slice of cake so far. This is also my favorite design in general so far. Now is when I started to become a huge Swifty. This is when I decided to make this 99% of my personality. This next one is red. Red was my favorite album for such a long time. It has to be the best design, the best flavor. This is the red era in the form of a cake. Are you kidding me? And the details on top, the sunglasses, that little gift. <gasps> An all too well leaf stuck to me. This is my karma from telling John Mayer to delete his account. I'm sorry. It's a little bit squished because, you know, it fell. You saw it. But there's a lot of things that I love about this cake. I know everything about these eras from now on. Like, I was there. I live this every single day. We've got the scarf from the all too well reference. We've got the guitar. We've got the 22 from, you know, the song. The leaves that I associate more with all too well. 10 minute version. And then on top, we've got the sunglasses the hat because, you know, it's in the photo shoot from the album cover, the little gift from the Eros tour, and then the red lipstick. You know, that was kind of important during the red era. I'm also covered in all too well leaves. I really said, I want you guys to put as many leaves as possible. And they said, okay. Red was my favorite album for so many years until a little bit later on, which I'll tell you which one is my favorite Taylor Swift album. We'll get there. I'm gonna make you wait. This was my favorite album for a really, really long time. It reminds me of growing up. It reminds me of listening to this in the car with my parents. It reminds me of becoming a Swifty. And this is the first time that I went to a Taylor Swift tour. I went three times to the Red Tour in London. I'm gonna get a slice with the sunglasses. I'm gonna get a big ass slice because I ruined the whole front. Might as well remove it. I'm gonna say, I think they've done an incredible job yet again. It really does look very authentic to the image. And now when it comes to the flavor, you already guess. I decided to go for red velvet cake. Okay, I was a little bit messy slicing it. That is aggressively red. Like that is not red, that is red. <laughs> that is the reddest thing I've ever seen. I'm colorblind and I can see this red in 3D, you know? That's when you know. So this is the red slice. Nothing else screamed red like red velvet. I mean, it was right there, the pun. I just had to do it. This album is a lot of my favorite songs. Like, All Too Well was always one of my favorites, even before the 10 minute version. State of Grace, which is the opening track, is one of my favorite songs possibly ever, so... Sometimes red velvet cake is too chocolatey. This one isn't. You can taste like a little bit of vinegar in it, which I think is very much like a red velvet thing. I think you have to add vinegar to red velvet cake. Am I wrong about this? The red area has a really special place in my heart because this is really truly when I became a Swifty, like full time, waiting in line before concerts, begging my parents to buy me albums and merch and everything else. I was there. I remember it. 
all too well. Songs like 22 and like the songs that everyone know from Taylor Swift, I think they're fun. They're not my favorite songs. I like the ones that make me cry. Red is a good album for that because you've got both, like polar opposites. I would consider this a pop album. So my obsession with Taylor Swift starts here and it only intensified throughout the years. So I cannot wait to get to the next ones. But this, a very delicious cake and a really cool design. I do think Cake-wise, Speak Now is my favorite so far. But we're gonna move on to the next one. It will get better. Next up, we've got 1989. This is the 1989 era in the form of a cake. Are you kidding me? This is so cute. Holy, the sand. That is so incredibly aesthetically beautiful then the polaroids in the right colors and you can grab them from top of the cake and it's all in like pastel like kind of like beige colors the quintessential 1989 element they've done such an incredible job at replicating what i've done it's just real now from 2d to 3d 4d wait 4d i don't know 1989 taylor's version is mostly a beach aesthetic and i do agree with that because i was there for the original 1989 era and it was mostly city it was new york city it was coffees it was seagulls and fashion and all those things you know so i wanted that in the cake and i think mine is very much the original 1999 era and i love that they've done the clouds they have left the back empty which is fine but i love the sand it's made of demerara sugar and then more frosting and frosting on here it's pretty incredible and the polaroid camera is like crazy can you see the polaroid camera and the statue of liberty i mean it's not the best in terms of design but altogether it's really effective this might be a controversial opinion when i close my eyes i think of coffee like a latte a cold morning in the city you know it's that's what it tastes like to me so that's what i went for on the inside coffee so i'm really excited for this i don't think i've ever had a coffee cake i'm sure they've done an amazing job so let's see where do we slice it me looking for the empire state building these are just just buildings in fact they copied my design a little bit too much it was just an idea <laughs> let me grab the polaroid camera it's 3d you can grab it <laughs> with a little leather strap and everything. I mean, this is so cute. Let me put this back on there. I mean, it slices like butter. The strongest coffee flavor scent. Something tells me this one will slice super easy. Oh, that is incredible when i said coffee i did not expect it to be this rich in color i thought it was going to be like a tan color this is like a deep deep coffee color so i wonder if it's going to be chocolate coffee this slice is so 1989 the polaroids on top i think this is great because all of my friends all the people i know who like Taylor Swift, but are not obsessed in the cult kind of way that I have been obsessed the past 15 years of my life. Those people's favorite album is always 1989 because it's got so many like popular songs on it. I'm glad this is doing justice to the casual Swift is watching this video. If this is your era, they ate this up. By the way, we're approaching my favorite era. We're getting so close. This smells so good. Is it chocolate and coffee or is it just coffee? Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't even tell if there's chocolate in this or not because the coffee flavor is so strong that I can't taste anything else. Very, very sweet. So if you're expecting this one to be a little bit better, it isn't. It's a very, very sweet cake. It is truly incredible. I like, I want to eat the whole thing. The sponge is so moist. This sauce is like a, a dulce de leche coffee kind of blend. This is an incredible cake for an incredible era. My favorite song on this album is Clean, which is also like in my top five favorite songs. By far my favorite song in 1989. Things are going to get a lot darker after this. So the next one, Reputation, is also the era in which I met Taylor Swift. So I'm gonna tell you the story. I wanna tell this story every day of my life. This is the Reputation era under the form of cake. I mean, that is visually spectacular. That is the word I'm looking for. That looks expensive. This is an incredible visual representation of the reputation era, which is the most expensive looking era. It's dark, 
It's like gold and snakes and graveyards and newspapers that you can't even see. There's like little sheets of newspaper on top. This one is really hard to show you because of all the jewelry. If I move this or tip this over, it's over. We've got a graveyard from the Look What You Made Me Do music video. Then we've got newspapers from the album cover. So I wanted the snake all around. Karen, heist money from the Look What You Made Me Do music video. Honestly, it's a pretty good representation of the album. And I love that this one, it's almost like fully 3D. And then the snake kind of goes on top of the cake. It looks really similar to my design. I kind of expected the snake to be a little bit bigger. So that's the only thing that I find a little bit disappointing. On the other hand, I did not expect the jewelry to look so cool. Like they've done such a good job with the colors. I don't know if these people know Taylor Swift. They must know because the details here are very specific. The snake also looks like a dragon a little bit, which is kind of disappointing. Like that is, is that a snake or is that a dragon? Should I show it to you? Oof. This is supposed to be the snake from the Reputation tour. The Reputation era holds a really special place in my heart because whenever someone tells me they were there for the Reputation era, I think we can be best friends immediately because everyone hated Taylor Swift at this time. So it felt really weird to say that you love Taylor Swift because people were very critical of it. It was really, really strange. This is also the era in which I met Taylor Swift. So I went to the Reputation stadium tour. This was like, my sixth time seeing Taylor Swift live at this point. People always want to know how did I get to meet Taylor Swift. I essentially posted a video that I went three times to the Red Tour, twice to the 1989 tour. I was also friends with some Taylor Swift update accounts, so they just shared my photos with Taylor Swift's team. I don't know. I know I received a phone call. I was at a car rental in Seattle and it was a phone number from New York and they were like, hey, do you have a minute to talk? And I instantly knew. I literally fell on the floor on my knees. Actually, no, I was lying on the floor at a car rental in Seattle. And they were like, would you want to meet Taylor Swift tomorrow? And I, yeah, I died. I died there on the spot. I think that was probably the highlight of my life up to now. That is sad, but it was. Yeah, the next day I went to meet Taylor Swift. It was as incredible as you can probably imagine. It was a little bit weird because you have this idea of Taylor Swift. It's really hard to explain, but when you meet your idol, you have like a realization Taylor Swift is like a person, like someone you could be friends with, like a real person and know like the music and the music videos. It's really hard to explain this. Taylor was really nice. She acted like, as if we've known each other for years. I don't even know if she knew who I was. She would liked a few of my tweets up to this point. So I've had interactions with Taylor because I'm that much of a big fan, but she made me feel like she knew exactly who I was. She gave me a big hug, like as soon as I arrived and I didn't know what to say. I talk so much and in that moment, at the time, I think we talked about living in London because we had that in common. I don't know if I should say that. And she was so nice and so warm. And I remember thinking, I cannot believe that someone who's so popular, it doesn't really matter whether she's nice to me or not. Like her life is going to be the same regardless. And she was just so nice and kind and warm. And all those nice things you hear about her, it, it was exactly that. We took photos and the rest is history. So reputation, a very special place in my heart. However, not my favorite album. I'm making you wait. So let's get a slice of the reputation cake. So the flavor for reputation, I decided to go with Oreo. I know you're thinking that doesn't sound like reputation. When you look at the album cover of reputation with the newspapers, it looks like Oreo buttercream. <laughs> so I went for Oreo. This is probably the richest looking slice ever. Like I took a huge slice. Oh, that does look like reputation. It's giving reputation immediately. Wow. Look at that. That looks pretty incredible. You can put some of that newspaper back in there. Wait, that looks like uh, the graveyard scene from the look what you made me do music video. We got some Oreo buttercream and then chocolate cake, I think. Oh, that is so buttery. Strangely, I'm not getting much Oreo from it. It's actually mostly the chocolate sponge that you're getting and it's very buttery, the buttercream. It doesn't have enough Oreo. I don't know if they only had like three Oreos for the whole cake, but that's kind of what it tastes like. It is a really great cake. It's super moist. It's a great chocolate sponge. It's very, very chocolatey. But Oreo, it is not. A little bit disappointed with the flavor of this one. But I mean, this is spectacular. All the jewelry and everything, they slayed in that kind of way. My favorite flavor so far, still this Peak Now Blueberry. This is probably my favorite design of the ones that I've made because it just added so much detail because Lover is quite a visually, I don't wanna say psychedelic, but like it's, colorful kind of aesthetic album. So I'm very excited. This is the Lover era in the form of a cake.
That is incredible. That is very lover. You know, very accurate. I mean, I came up with the design, so obviously I know my Taylor Swift lore, but that literally looks exactly like what I was referencing, which was this graffiti wall from the Lover era. It looks incredible. The only thing is, I wish the colors of the cake was more like a... I kind of wanted like a gradient, purple pink skies, not to quote, but to quote. And it's not giving that, but it is very much what the Lover era was like, especially that butterfly. And then the center of it is the Archer, which is probably one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm gonna show you the zoom in and all the details and everything, but overall, incredible. This is probably my favorite one so far. So we got the Cornelia Street sign, which was really important to me. We got some glitter hearts. This whole era was very glittery. The rainbow pride flag. This is from the Need to Calm Down music video. The Eiffel Tower from, in general, the whole album, but specifically from the Live from Paris version of the album, which I really love. The Archer reference, the clouds, because the whole album I find that is inspired by the sky in the morning, in the very early morning. The butterflies, this one looks exactly exactly like an outfit that Taylor Swift wore in Paris during this era. These butterflies from a graffiti from this era as well. And then this from The Archer, which is one of my favorite songs. I think it looks so good. It looks so similar to my design. The only thing I would have changed is really, I don't like this shade of pink. I just don't think it looks that nice. I would prefer it to be almost like a gradient, which I realize now that I didn't specify that that's what I wanted, but that's what I wanted. But it, it's beautiful nevertheless. It's probably my favorite cake so far, I think. Lover has some of my favorite songs and some songs that I really don't care much for. Not to drag me into it and me being the song me. That was not my favorite. Songs like Daylight and Cornelia Street, Death by a Thousand Gods. I love all those songs. A really good album that I find is often underrated. So I'm gonna get a slice with the Cornelia Street sign just, just for the fun of it. This one slices so well. Do you see the cloud going down? Wait, the clouds are made of marshmallow? There's like marshmallow on the outside. That's pretty cool. But this will, it slices really, really well. Please tell me it's a clean slice. Okay, so the flavor of this is supposed to be cotton candy, which I think is a great representation of the album. And this literally, like with the Cornelia Street sign, <laughs> that is the most lover cake I could have ever asked for. Like the cake on the inside, that is the shade of pink that I wanted on the outside. With the clouds and the Cornelia Street sign, it looks funny, but it looks very lover. I try to think of what these arrows mean to me and I, not joking now, like I am a Swifty and I can think of exactly what I was going through my life in every single one of these eras like the red era I was still living at home 1989 this is when I was like I wanted to get out I wanted to go be on my own live on my own reputation reminds me of getting my first place my tiny apartment and making my 24-hour food videos that was doing reputation era and lover my videos were becoming really popular at this point and it reminds me of traveling the world getting my first house like I had like a big house which was crazy that that was happening to me and I'm so grateful that I have all these albums as kind of bookmarks in my life you know when I listen to these songs I think of those times and that that is something that is so incredible so if you're not a Swifty I'm just trying to <laughs> convince you to do it okay let's try this is supposed to be cotton candy because I had to like when you think of lover you think of cotton candy sugary sweet that doesn't smell like cotton candy Ooh. That is incredible. I was not expecting, but I think this is also my favorite flavor so far. This is really close to the Speak Now flavor. Lover and Speak Now, both in aesthetic and flavor, are the best ones. It's like cotton candy in a way that is not too sweet, but the whole thing, it's so moist and wet, and there's so many layers of so many things. I can't even tell you what's in it, because there's just so much. A cotton candy layer, maybe a raspberry layer, and a whipped cream layer. All together, it's fruity, sweet, burnt, sugary. It's delicious. I really want to finish the whole slice, but I really can't. I want to try one of these marshmallow clouds. That is the only thing I really want to try. But overall, I think this is my favorite cake so far, which I wasn't expecting. I think it's fun, it's cute, and it's not too childish, you know? This could have looked like a children's birthday cake, and it doesn't. And that's difficult. So what is this? Is it marshmallow? 
No. Next up, we've got my second favorite Taylor Swift album. This is, it's so close to being my favorite Taylor Swift album, but there's one that's just, that I like a little bit more. This is the folklore era in the form of a cake. Oh, that is, that is so cute. It is so folklore. It is so aesthetically neat and like, Dreamy. I love this. The trees on top, the mirror ball. That is a beautiful cake. It's quite simple, but in this one, it actually makes sense. That kind of represents the albums. We've got the cardigan from the cardigan. The detail on it is so incredible. So first of all, we've got a bottle of wine. This is from the song August. We've got the cardigan from the cardigan. We've got the string of gold lights from the song Invisible String. And also you can see this in the cardigan music video, I think. Then we've got the stars, which this is my favorite Taylor Swift lyric of all time, which is you drew stars around my scars. So we wanted to put that on there. And the whole thing is just the perfect color, which is like, like that grayish, you know, it's not beige and it's not gray. It's like in between, which is exactly what I wanted. And this is so smooth. We got the trees, which is the album cover. And we've got, we've got a disco ball from the song Mirror Ball. I'm so happy with this. I think this is the most simple one and my favorite one. I know this is not probably the, the most spectacular one. It's not Lover. We've got all these elements and the colors and everything. But to me, this is exactly why I love this album and why it's my second favorite. My connection to this album, it was there for me, you know? It was there for me at such a low moment in the world. This would be one of my favorites regardless. This album has my favorite lyrics. This album has my favorite songs. It's just a really good album. If anyone wants to get into Taylor Swift, like if you've never listened to it, start here because it's just it's so good that it's gonna make you want to listen to everything else my favorite songs on this album i can't pick a favorite i love all of them but if i had to pick one mirror ball this is me trying cardigan august seven these are all my favorite songs i love all of them. There's literally not a single skip for me in this album. Every single song, I will sit there and I will listen to it. I'm gonna get a slice with the stars. When this album came out, the world was going through COVID. It was really hard. It was a pretty dark moment for the world for a second. I feel like now we look back and we kind of forget, but it was scary at the time. And this album was just the only good thing that's happened in that period of time. So a lot of people have a special place for this album like I do. It reminds me of living in the country side in England, which is where I lived at the time, and I had a big house in quarantine, honestly. It reminds me of being there and trying to do the most with what I had inside the house, struggling making videos because my creative ideas were dried up. This album was there for me throughout all of this. When I tell you the flavor of this, you might be slightly horrified, but you will also agree with me. The flavor for this is tea. This is supposed to be an Earl Grey flavored cake. I mean, nothing else would make sense. This is what this album tasted like to me. Oh, that is a beautiful, rich color on the inside, which I wasn't expecting. I thought it was going to be white in the center, but it's not. It's such a beautiful, contrasty color. I wonder what this is going to taste like. I am so curious about this. There we go, a slice of the folklore cake. It makes me really mad looking at this cardigan. I could have owned one of these, and I don't own one of these because I was like, I'm sure they're going to be around forever. And I really missed out, you know? If anyone has one of these, I will give you so much money for one that you don't understand, that you don't want to know how much money I'm willing to pay for one of these, a real one. All I want for Christmas this year is one of these, and I can't find one anywhere. I also want to get- no, no, I'm not gonna ruin it. Well, it is here. They've done the details and everything. Let's see what the cake actually tastes like. Earl Grey flavor. Oh, that is tea flavor. This immediately takes me back to living in England. This is incredible. When I lived in England, I used to have tea a lot. It's just what people do in England. You drink a lot of tea. One of the ways we have tea in England is we dip biscuits in the tea and then they get really soft and like mushy. That's what this cake tastes like, like a soft, mushy tea biscuit. I love this. This is my favorite one so far. I'm, I'm so, it's my favorite cake and my favorite flavor. Can this get better? Probably not, this is this is it. A tea flavored cake is the most unexpected slay of this whole video. There's a crunchy element to it. There's something crunchy in here, like a biscuit wafer. It is so good. Oh my God, this is delicious. Look how whimsical this looks, like the little string of lights. 
whimsical. Who do I think I am? Not me acting like I wrote the likes out of a sudden. The next one is a very special one for me. It's just one more bite. And finally, my favorite Taylor Swift album. This is the Evermore era in the form of a cake. Are you kidding me? That is so beautiful. The cabin on top, the ivy. This is like meeting my idol. The album that my idol made. And the color could not have been more perfect. And this is my favorite album and the fact that I think is a sleigh. I know everything about this album, left to right, right to left, front to back, back to front, up to down, down to up. This has been my most played album since the year that it came out. So for three years now, this has been my most played album every year. This is the album cover from Evermore and I really wanted to include that because this makes the whole thing look like Evermore themed. Then this is Ivy from the song Ivy. Ivy is my second favorite Taylor Swift song ever. This is a cowboy hat and a cowboy rope from the song Cowboy Like Me. This is my number one favorite Taylor Swift song ever. There's not even a close, there is a close second, fair enough, and a close third, and a fourth, and a fifth, but it is my favorite. Then on top we've got the cabin from the Folklore Evermore era, and we've got a willow tree and a quill with a piece of paper. The quill is actually because Taylor said she writes her music with three different types of pens, and Evermore was written in this type of pen, which is a quill. So I wanted to include that. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed is I had a willow tree with all these leaves kind of hanging over the cabin, and it looked so effective. Like it was probably one of my favorite designs that I've made, and they haven't done that because I guess that would be too much work. Not really, they could have done it with like, maybe like wire or something. To me, this is up there with Folklore in my favorite designs. This album has my top three or two favorite songs. Cowboy Like Me is my number one. So this is my favorite album. This is the one I listen to the most. It is my comfort album. It reminds me of winter. And when I'm sometimes getting ready to like film YouTube videos, this is the vibe that I channel, which is <laughs> I need to relax before the chaos that we create in the world. This is my escape place. Like a lot of these albums are perfect like escape place. A lot of the times when I'm traveling or, you know, making content, sometimes life is quite uncertain. I never know where I'm gonna be, what I'm gonna be doing, but these albums are like, you bring them with you, you know? It's like bringing home with you anywhere you go. Not me having a therapy session. The flavor of this is supposed to be maple. I mean, maple is the perfect flavor for Evermore because it's like wintry, fallish, but not too fallish. So it just made perfect sense. I also love maple flavored anything, so I'm very excited for this. This one better slice like butter. This is my favorite. Oh, yes. I was so worried it was gonna be chocolate. It smells exactly how I would have thought Evermore would smell. The cowboy on top is really doing something here. It really adds up. Why does this look like an Indiana Jones themed cake now? You get the idea. I don't know if this is a heavy joke to make, but that rope, why is it doing that? At least it's not hanging the other way around. Me, when I listen to Marjorie a little bit too often, I'm like, so let's give it a try. I hope this is gonna be maple in there. That is so good. That did not disappoint. It's really hard to describe because the maple flavor is really subtle, both in the buttercream and in the sponge, I think. I can't really tell, but it's also like vanilla-like. It almost tastes like a Twinkie. Imagine a maple flavored Twinkie. That's what this tastes like, like cloudy, pillowy, light, fluffy, sweet. It is a very good cake. And honestly, this chocolate frosting on the outside adds a little something to these cakes. It's a really clever way to use chocolate to kind of seal the moisture. And it's really, really effective and it tastes incredible. My favorite era, my favorite album, so I am biased. My honest opinion is that this is the best cake ever. All my favorite songs are on there. If I have to look at it objectively, the most spectacular one is probably Lover. This is my favorite one though, cause it's just, look, it's all my favorite things. My happy place, you know? This is the world I wanna live in. Let me know what your favorite Taylor Swift album is. Now that I've told you mine, I need to know yours. That's how it works. Like, this is not free. But we've got one more album left. I'm just gonna have one more bite of this, cause this is, it's just, it's screaming my name. It's, it's singing to me right now. And the final Horcrux to complete my collection. 
Midnight. This is the most recent Taylor Swift album, and this is the Midnight era in the form of a cake. That looks really cool. Oh my god, the way it sparkles. It is bejeweled. <laughs> the baker let the cake bejeweled. <laughs> I know so many inside jokes and references that it's crazy that I'm really fighting urges in this video to not come across as a, like a crazy, insane person. Too late, right? But this is beautiful. I love the colors. I love this on top. The cloud looks really cool, even though not exactly what I imagined, but it looks cool. The clock, the lavender. You can't even notice the lavender. Wait a minute. We need to see this up close. Literally like water rain puddle on top, but I can't show you anymore because otherwise the cake will collapse like the red era. This is not an exception. This looks exactly the same as what I've designed. I mean, it's like they really brought to life my drawings, which is incredible. I was not expecting something as accurate as this. We got the moon and the stars because it's midnight. We've got the raindrops from Midnight Rain. Oh, this is gonna sound insane. From the anti-hero music video, this is the color of the eggs. <laughs> The clock, because, you know, that's the whole concept of the album. The, the lavender from the song Lavender Haze, and then the stairs that actually have broken with a cloud. This is from the Aero Store, which I thought it was a really beautiful aesthetic, and I really wanted to include it, but then the stairs broke. Oh, wait a second, maybe they're supposed to be like this. I wish they would have done more of the raindrops in the back just to fill it up a little bit, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. You guys only see the front. The details on this is crazy. And I wanted everything to be super glittery because I wanted it to look like the Bejeweled music video and it very much is. Midnight's was the first album that came out when I already lived in America. Specifically, I was living in Los Angeles when Midnight's came out. So whenever I listen to Midnight's, I always think of living in LA, a bittersweet part of my American experience. I love the city, I love the people, but it didn't have sometimes the best experiences there. That's what the era reminds me of. It can't always be positive memories. So I'm gonna get a slice from the midnight cake. Let's see how far we can go. I didn't even notice, but the way they've done the frosting, it kind of looks like the night sky. Do you see how it almost looks like there's layers. I don't know if it was intentional, but it really is like the night sky. So I wanna get a slice with the moon on it. Okay, we might need to move the moon a little bit. Even though I'm such a big fan of Folklore and Evermore, I was actually really happy when Midnight's came out and it was a pop album. We collectively as a society spent too much time being sad because of the lockdowns and everything that happened in the world. We needed to live it up a little bit and that was needed. I actually really enjoy this album. My favorite song on Midnight's is Sweet Nothing, Bigger Than The Whole Sky. I know, why do I like the, the saddest songs? But I really do. And Antihero, I think that's a really good song as well. The flavor of it is supposed to be lavender because of lavender haze. I don't know if it's because of the lavender, but that did not slice great. <laughs> this is the kind of cake you eat at midnight on your own with a spoon. Like you don't slice this. It actually makes sense. It was perfectly on theme. It is also kind of like a green color on the inside because of the lavender. It does not look great. <laughs> the cake is too moist in the middle. It's almost undercooked. It's almost doughy. I don't think it was the way I sliced it. Look at the center. It's fully collapsed. The glitter kind of mixed in. It's giving anti-hero music video. I mean, I'm happy with this. I feel like I'm living such a childhood dream. All my favorite albums lined up under the form of cakes here. The fact that I get to live this experience, the only thing better than this would be to own an actual cardigan. <laughs> I'm really manifesting I'm gonna get one. You will see, it will happen. Let's try the lavender flavored cake. It's very lavendery. <laughs> it reminds me of either a British pork sausage, which is a very strange flavor reference, but it reminds me of that. There's like a herb in a British pork sausage that tastes like this, but also reminds me of dish soap. Strangely, I like it. I think this one is extra lavendery. Instead of being a hint, it's like they put the whole lavender in there. But I like it. I know it's falling apart, but the flavor of this is actually so good. I don't really care that it's falling apart. Like, look at me. Does it look like I care? I stopped caring a long time ago. I'll just eat the damn cake with my hands at this point. When we used to make cake videos, to be like, it's so beautiful, I don't want to cut into it. Now I'm like, okay, give me the knife. Done. Great. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. <laughs> Well, I really am growing up into a terrible person, but growing up nevertheless. This is a very good cake. It's not, it doesn't even rank within my favorites. My favorites were 
the tea flavor folklore and the blueberry speak now. Those were incredible cakes. What if I eat one of these raindrops? Just straight up sugar. And by the way, if you're a Swifty watching this, me and you, we go way back. So I've put a present for you before you finish watching this video. This is not just a present, it's a present. So you want to stay tuned for that. I mean, look at this. I have practically taken you guys on the Eros tour from debut, fearless, speak now, red. <laughs> It's really hard to do this without singing. 1989, Reputation, Lover, Folklore, Evermore, Right in the Back, and Midnights. I have a special giveaway for you guys in this video because this video meant so much to me that I'm like, I need to end this on such a high note. I own quite a few items of memorabilia from Taylor Swift, like official rare items. And I've decided to give away a signed album. I actually owned a signed red album and a signed lover album. I have a few, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm gonna give two of them away to you guys. These are official, I bought them myself from the official website, you have my word. You either be a Swifty or know somebody who's like a crazy Swifty. Please be that if you wanna enter because this will mean a lot to a lot of people. Spam the hell out of the comment section. I'm gonna use a comment generator. I'm gonna pick two of you guys, one of you to win the red and one of you to win the lover album. So comment which one you want or if you want both, comment in separate comments. Don't forget to give the video a like and this is a must, you must be subscribed to my YouTube channel because I am going to go on your channel to message you, to send you the signed albums. So this is a big deal because I never thought I would give this away to anybody. I'm in a Christmas spirit, you know? And I feel like you guys deserve it. So make sure you're subscribed and just go in the comment section. And if you didn't get Eros tickets, at least you got this, which is nothing like it, but it's free. So that's something. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope you had fun and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.